Hello, welcome back to, uh, this is part two of the bolt action medium mortar basing and painting tutorial. Thanks for all the uh, folks who viewed part one. The, uh, this part, I'm going to focus on continuing with the, uh, the base itself. I know a lot of people want to get into painting. Painting is covered in a lot of, uh, a lot of different videos ad nauseum. So I am going to uh, pan over. Things you're going to need for this one are uh, a couple smaller tools. I have managed to purchase uh, basically a, uh, a very cheap set of uh, they look like picks or uh, they almost look like dental tools. Anyway, these are really useful in uh, moving moving basing material around. So uh, I'm going to need a set of those. They do. I think you can get them at Harbor Freight. They're very cheap, between uh, two and five bucks. I don't recall what the price was. Obviously, you're going to need water for cleanup. Sorry, that looks really nasty. Uh, these little cups you get at uh, fast food restaurants. Sometimes they put them in your your uh, takeout food. Uh, feel free to go grab a couple of those. They're fantastic. Lastly, I'm using the Golden Gel Medium Coarse Pumice Gel. They sell a couple different types of this pumice gel. This is, uh, as a friend said, the bomb diggity of uh, basing material if you want a very uh, coarse, sandy type uh, uh, base. Uh, I do tend to gravitate more towards uh, spackle and things of that nature. In the last tutorial we have our uh, our single base. We have our guys there and uh, I will be continuing on from here. So, Okay, so what we've essentially got is our, uh, our lone trooper on his uh, very, very lonely little base there. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move these guys out of the way a little bit. Move the base out of the way. We'll focus on him. Let's get the uh, single spot laid down. Now the reason that you're going to uh, be basing is obviously you can see this guy stands a fair degree above the base. So what we're going to try and do is make up that material and uh, eventually cover it in paint and flocking material. So we've got uh, this handy dandy chisel bit that came in a couple different types. Now the pumice, if you've never seen it, looks like really gnarly paper mache material. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a little bit of the pumice and we're going to uh, kind of squeeze it on there. We're going to cover, use the, uh, basically put it over the container. Try not to lose any details on the actual miniature. And we're really just going to fill it in. This stuff is like working with wet sand. If you're wondering where you can get said pumice material, and again I talk as if everybody here is in the United States, I don't have a lot of suggestions as to where somebody in a foreign country would get it, but uh, as most of my articles can attest to that I write on my hobby blog, which, shameless plug, is uh, Highlander Burial at blogspot.com which the link will always be ever-present in these YouTube videos. But anyway, I uh, do not like spending a lot of money on anything, really. So uh, what I do is I, I ended up buying mine from uh, from Michael's with the coveted 40 to 50% off coupon, depending on when and where you go. I'm just going to wipe off a lot of the uh, base material here so it fits nicely back into its slot. Now if you uh, if this stuff does dry on and uh, don't panic when it's wet you really can just wipe it off. If you want to you can uh, cut across some of this to cover up the actual base you just have to put in a really thin coat just like that. 
Uh, this pumice stuff, a friend of mine did some uh, some basing with this for like a beaches of Normandy, and it came out okay. The stuff dries really granular, so I would recommend using the uh, the finer, less coarse material. can see that really well. Try and get the camera in here. All right, here's uh, continuing on with the uh, basing project. You can see that I've actually allowed this dude to dry a little since the last uh, three seconds ago that you saw. It's amazing what you can do with time lapse. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different. I've got this stuff here. You can see that. I'm going to be using a uh, rock base. You can see this is basically a scrapbooking page I got from Michaels. I don't know I'm not supposed to say uh, brand names, but uh, anyway. It comes in a couple different sizes. If you look, it comes in super thin and a little thicker. So I'm going to be using the uh, thicker type. What I'm going to be doing is basically ripping off pieces of it to uh, put onto the base. Now, I have glued these guys down. Yeah, okay, see. I'm not going to glue the mortar down yet, because I need that to be above the surface. I just need to fill in around these guys' as bases. So, <clears throat> the biggest thing is, uh, when you rip the stuff off, <clears throat> sorry, you want to uh, make sure there's very little square edge showing. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, place that a little bit. There we go. Actually, worked out pretty good. <clears throat> there is a square edge, but I'm going to fill in some of that with uh, the pumice gel. The other thing about rock is you want to layer it up. Now, clearly, these guys would be hiding somewhat behind the rock. So, I'm going to do a little bit of build up on that, and then a small piece. Right there. So it's very uh, layer-esque, I sure I could say. And uh, a couple pieces behind this guy. There we go. Okay last part for this uh, particular tutorial. We'll be going on to uh, painting and uh, other things. So I finished off the rock. I did have to scrape down a little bit right there because I realized I didn't have a lot of room for the mortar itself, which is kind of the point of the miniature in the first place. So with that, back to my coarse pumice gel. I'll be doing some filling in around. I may stop the camera at some point and uh, kind of speed this along because I know that YouTube video watchers typically have the attention spans of ferrets on cappuccino. So maybe an espresso. I'm going to kind of layer it down a little bit, give it a lip edge, but I do need to go at least up to the flashing point of the miniature. So, with that, got to be really careful putting this stuff around. Now, don't think you need to fill in all the gaps, because you don't. Just enough to make it look uh, readable. And the other thing you can do is uh, use the mighty flock grass you need to as a filler, which I particularly like the look of.
I might speed this up a little bit. Now the taper is going to be a little bit artificial. I'm going to kind of use the edge to squeeze it in. But overall the effect on the miniature is going to be pretty good. Again, we don't necessarily need to do all of it. Just enough to make the base look a little less wonky here. Oh, I love hitting the camera. Three points for me. When you plan these out, these bases, just obviously make sure you've got enough room for everything you want to put on there. And uh, don't worry if you don't get enough stuff on here. As I mentioned before, you can. Uh, Realistically, you can do a lot with paint and uh, basically other other materials, bushes and whatnot. That's the beautiful part about basic miniatures, I think, is unlike spackling your kitchen, you have forgiving alternatives to uh, making it look better and making the viewer appreciate what the uh, what the base is trying to convey. I'm not a bitter home improvement person. I just know that uh, doing this stuff is a lot easier than pleasing an angsty wife about home repairs. That's neither here nor there. So, uh, rant over. Okay, in the back part here, Despite the fact it's flat, what we're going to do is just try and build up enough to uh, make the base kind of compatible with the dude we already just did. So, this pumice dries in about, uh, it dries pretty solid in about 8 hours, but you really want to give it a little more time than that. because you don't want it flaking off. So we'll put it down and just to give it a little gut check here we'll put our steam fearless leader in the hole. So there we go. Okay. So far so good. We got our rock built up a little bit. We even want to put just a smidge in front here. Just a smidge. Just to make it look a little less artificial. Okay. Oops. Well, that. And again, you can always scrape it down too. This pumice is not to the point where you can't. You can't, uh. Kind of gather in a bit with a hobby knife. So, anyway, just to show you again, that's what we've got so far. Kind of push that up a little. And the pumice cleans up with water, obviously. So. No. You can press the mortar in just to make sure you've got you can put holes in there and to give the pumice a uh, push down look. We're gonna move the mortar over just a smidge because I think it's gonna shoot that guy's elbow if it goes off. Okay. That's it for this one, and uh, stay tuned for part three. We're going to go over some uh, painting kits and uh, see what this looks like when it's all dried out. So, thanks for watching this series.